Okay, in the same two reactions, if you have a protic solvent, what is the problem? In the same two reactions, if you use a protic solvent, what is the problem? Septaryomy in the same two reaction. In SM two reaction. Okay, what is the problem to use a protic solvent in a SM2 reaction? Protic solvent to liquefy hydrogen and comes up and protic solvent over stabilized the nuclear So the starting material becomes over stabilized, that's why the activation period becomes higher. So the reaction becomes slower. So in a SM2 reaction, it's better to use Product but non protic solvent, not protic solvent, then reaction is stable with a high energy level. Okay. 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 reaction is a single step, there's a transition state, but there's no intermediate, right? And SM2, two means bimolecular, so that's not first order reaction, that's a second order reaction. Two reactions uh, involved in reaction uh, between the two together. There's no retention, it should be inversion of the chemistry. Okay. Okay, so Okay, SN1 
we are saying that the couple can are intermediate and it's not the tension of the third chemistry. Why this is not answered yet enough? SM2 reaction makes inversion. SM1 reaction in English. Racemization. It's a mix up for the two. It's not the tension internet, but they generate the half and half mixtures. That's the SM1 property. Outside of reaction center, reaction center is a disc attack here. So that's why there's nothing happens. No inversion, it should be retention. And intermediate, so that's also similar to the central reaction. One step tension state and racemization <coughs> doesn't happen. Chiral center, dialectic center is not effective in just the wide reaction. Okay. After the reaction is done, and the intermediate is formed. And nucleophile attack this, then inversion happens. Okay, the first step of tosylation is just activating activation of a hydrophil groups. Okay, let's move on. In SN1 reaction, stabilizing the carbocation is the most important, and then leaving group if it's a water, and exceptionally, it has much better leaving group than any other leaving groups in SN2 reactions. Others have a similar trend, but water is exceptionally stabilized. Tertiary SN2 is impossible. Either SN1 or E1, we didn't learn how the E officially yet, so it's a substitution reaction, so we could assume that this is the SN1 reaction. Okay, 
that reaction on alcohol attack P first, and then Br comes back, bromide comes back and attack behind, and then inversion happens. Okay? Second reaction. we learned about this. So this is electrophile, means which has delta plus here. Right? So if there is a nucleophile or electron rich guys coming in, then attack position can be maybe here. Then nucleophile is added here. That's S reaction. So the substitution reaction. But there are two possibilities. If it is an open structure here, it can attack directly here, like a primary alkyl. So then that's SN2 reaction, that's a one step reaction. One step, but two reactants participate in the reaction together to make a one transition state, that's a SN2 reaction. If it's a stepwise, if this is very crowded, like a tertiary, then it's very difficult for nucleophile to approach here. In that case, these guys self-decompose first to generate a carbocation. Why cation? This one is negatively charged, maybe. Then one minus generated, then left over should be positive. So that is relatively stable, that's why that is intermediate, not transition. If that goes through that carbocation intermediate, that's a two-step reaction, but each step is first-order reaction. There is no counting for the nucleophile here, just the decomposing of this electrophile is a one reaction in kinetics. Second step is the, the meeting together, but this one is already very reactive intermediate. The second step is almost automatically going. So only we can observe first step reaction. 
So that side is the first of the year. Okay. That's what we have learned. And then there is some general trend of a nucleophile trend. More electron rich is a better nucleophile. Electrophile trend, less bulky, is a better for SM2 reaction. Right? Solvent wise, too stabilized as a nucleophile is the, the bad for SM2 reaction. But for SN1 reaction, that's a better. Polar solvent can stabilize intermediate state. That's what we have learned. Okay? Uh, I think you are not very So today, we are going to see a little different aspect of this reaction. Nucleophile approach, for some reason, it does not attack this position. It attacks to the next carbon's proton. Coming approach, for some reason, it does not attack directly here. It may attack here. And then end the product is, this one is the end product. So as a reaction, this is a sort of suspicion as a reaction. This one, as a result, this is an elimination reaction, E reaction. Reverse reaction is addition reaction. So we learn the four different types of reactions. Elimination, addition, exchange, and rearrangement. So we are handling the two of them in this other part. So we have electrophile. If you add this nucleophile, that oxide, if this attack directly here, your product should be secondary alcohol. Then you may assume, okay, that's SN2 reaction. But since like that's the product is not S reaction product, since like that's E product, eliminated product. And elimination could happen this way, double bond can form here, that means this is reaction center, but next carbon proton here, or next carbon proton here. Two possibilities. So the product wise, the double bond can be formed this way or this way. If you compare these two, now you see those relative, relative amount. This one is a higher amount. Now you can guess why is a higher amount for that reaction? More? Huh? Oh? nickel. Okay, Markov nickel was given I had one X I want to have another X here So that's a little, a little different rule for the fully saturated position That's Markov nickel, right? But here we are talking about double bond so that's a different guy, not Markov nickel. How do you explain this? Hmm? More supposedly, uh, the Akin is a more stable, and the explanation was the two kinds: more sp2, sp2 number, or hyperconjugation. The explanation was there. Okay. So in this in this case. Substitution is of only one substitute that came. This one has one IP here and one IP here too. So that is a little more stable than this one. So product stability, the drug, the, the drug, the reaction into this as the major product. Now, in this case, the official position, now you have the option to make double bond here or here, those are the same, or here. So even though it has uh, two options here, six protons still, <coughs> amount-wise a little increased, but still this one is more stabilized because one, two, three substitutes, and this one is a one, two substitute. So this one is a little more stable. So somehow elimination is happened here. Three possibilities. Since like reaction is elimination, okay, that's clear. Okay, this reaction, E2, E2 reaction, nucleophile, um, in this case, that's called base. Okay? If you attack here, then we could call that's nucleophile. But that attack, not directly here, 
지급하게 옆에 있는 photon effect. And then this electron is pushed down, and then this one is removed. So reaction looks like a very similar to SNP reaction. Just the attack position is different. Attack position wise, if it comes here and then removed in one line, SNP. But if it comes here, attack here, and then the push this out, this reaction is called the DP2 reaction. Analogous to SN1, SN2 reaction. Another possibility. So in this case, D2 reaction. Oh, sorry. I'm going to go to the This is D2 reaction. Another possibility is D1 mechanism. In this case, similar to SN1 reaction, this decomposes first to generate the carboferon first. Now, intermediate is exactly the same as E1. The SN1. SN1 case, using this intermediate, the nucleophile attacks the to this and then finishes the first reaction. But in E1 reactions, through this intermediate, now a base are the attack, and then this proton is removed somehow, and then product is formed as an elimination product. So mechanism is very similar to SN1. That means it forms the intermediate as like this. One way is you can go SN1 reaction. The other way is to go to E1. Product is different. So it seems like there is some similarity between E2 and SN2, E1 and SN1. Very funny way, there is another mechanism. In this case, E1C conjugate the base. It's not very common, but there is some cases we need to explain through this. E1 mechanism case, leaving group was removed first and forming carboparan as an intermediate. E1CB case, somehow, this proton is removed by base first. And then this anion is formed as an intermediate. And this extra electron is pushed down, and then this living group is removed later. So step was step order is changing. E1 case, living group was removed first, and then carboparin is formed, and then proton is removed. That's E1. E1 CB case, this anion is formed first. The reason is this anion is. If this anion is much more stable than other cases, I will show the example later. So if this is more stabilized than cation, then anion could be formed first. But this is kind of exceptional case. So main thing is E1 and E2. Now, if you look at this reaction, what do you expect? Now you have four options. SN2, SN1, E1, E2. Now, you added base. Base could be nucleophile too. So K rate usually we consider that base. How about the possibility of SN2? SN2 possible? SN2 impossible because it's a special condition. Right? SN2, forget about it. Maybe SN1 or E1 or E2 and result is like this. Seems like there is no X product. And the two product is eliminated product. And then this is a major. Again, this is a less substitute of the alkene. And this is a more substitute alkene. And there is a strong base. Strong base has a chance, better chance to attack the proton on this position. And then attack that proton and then push it, push it in and push it out. So two reactions are possible. Majority wise, in this case, there may be some possibility for the E1 too, but majority we believe this is E2 is a dominant. If you use a strong base. Okay. Now, so for those E2 reactions, as I said, E2 reaction, base come in and attack proton first, not up. Push up, push and push, and then this is removed and it generates eliminated product. 
어디를 치고 사라질 때 어떻게 생겼는지 그림 그리면서 연습을 좀 해야 돼. 어떤 프로펜이 맞는지 그려놓은 거 보면 알 수가 있지만 손으로 그려보면 잘안 그려져. It's next carbon to nucleophilic addition set. So if it attacks directly here, this is stereo stereo of the chiral receptor, which you should have inversion, right? So that next carbon and attacks both. And the evidence that whether this is not E1, this is really E2, is one of the evidence we give. Now, if reaction the third state, if you use proton or deuterium. Deuterium is the isotope of hydrogen, right? It has mass of two, heavy, double the molecular, the atomic weight. So if you add the base, if the reaction, deuterium case and hydrogen case, if it has the same speed, then would you judge this as E1 or E2? If the reaction speed is the same for deuterium or hydrogen, so this is E1 mechanism. E2 mechanism, if you draw this uh, reaction profile, how would you draw? Similar to this? Or similar to SN2? SN2, the meaning of 2 is a bimolecular, right? Two reactants react together, that's why we put 2. That's the second of the reaction. E2, you can assume, has to be exactly the same way, this type of shape. Position is a little different, but attack and living group, living happens at the same time. Like this. So if this reaction, it has a two possibilities, that's the second decision. So it has a chance to react as an E1 or E2. Product is anyway, eliminated product. If it is E1, then reaction speed for D and H. The first cleavage site is here, right? The first cleavage site is here. Bromide is removed the first. Then, this, either whether this is H or D, that effect for this cleavage is minimal. So if it is an E1 mechanism, anyway, intermediate forming here is determined by this cleavage. So reaction speed would be similar. But if there is an E2, the reaction happens, attack, base attack here, and then cleave this site. Then that cleavage between D, D and C and H and C is different. H is lighter, so that's why H cleavage is faster than D cleavage. So this kind of effect is we call isotope effect. When we have heavier isotope, if that is involving in uh, the rate of determining step, that generates a different speed of reaction. So that is the evidence that this reaction, so when we observe those reactions, H is a factor, and deuterium is slower to generate this product. Then, based on this result, what can you say? The reaction mechanism in this is E1 or E2. This is the E2 reaction. Cleavage of this proton or the deuterium is important for reaction rate here. Okay. So this is the evidence that there is, it seems like, the synergistic uh, the reaction, attack and leaving happens together, and this is the E2 reaction. Now, if there is the E2 reaction, we said the coming in molecular orbital and then leaving group molecular orbital should be on the same plane, right? If it's also gone up, then reaction doesn't happen. Then if it should be on the same uh, the same plane, same plane we say peri plana. Peri means together or plural. So together plana. So to make it two possibilities. One is this is attacking site. 
this is a living site. So similar to essential reactions, base coming in and pushing this down, this reaction, the entire reactions. Or the other possibility is rotate up and then on the same reactions, same reactions. So here, attack here and then it doesn't move down, it's coming going up. This is maybe less phases than this one. Still, this is overlap. Then the stability is uh, better stabilized than orthogonal. Orthogonal reaction doesn't happen. But this one is partially overlap. Or this one is on the same plane, a line. Entire versus a uh, this thing. Maybe two possibilities. But if you look at those configuration, this one and this one. This is the staggered one and this is eclipsed one. Right? Which one is the more stable? Stable one is more stable than eclipsed one. We learned in the very beginning of the lecture. Right? So that's why when it forms this kind of a conformation, this is a more preferred conformation. So most of the cases, if you look at those reaction, uh, the, the reaction, anti-attack and then anti-removal is main product. They can fly. Again, this is similar to SN2 reactions. If it is SN2, attack happens here, and the living group moves down, it's on the same line. It's a similar to anti attack. But if E2 cases, attack here, and then push this down slightly this way, and remove that and the living group. So again, same way, nucleophile attack to carbon, then this is the SN2 reaction. Nucleophile attack not directly to the carbon. Next, the carbon's hydrogen. So then, attack here and then push it down. It's a slightly the off of the reaction. Okay, I'm repeat repeatedly saying that E2 reaction is very similar to SN2 reactions. Profile is also similar, and kinetics is also similar. So, if you look at those uh, the compound configuration, now you need to figure out how you can generate these entire conditions. Now, starting from this material, this compound is a nickel compound. So that means RS and the R, nickel compound, and also it has mirror image in the middle, mirror plane in the middle. So, if you align this into entire position, so there is one column here and another column here, right? One column here and another column is behind. So there's a two carbon connections, and then base attack from top, and then living group removed from the bottom. Then this one and this one is coming to the same plane to generate this the alkene. Now this alkene is just E or G. Cis or trans. So this one has the same structure and the same size, and we can call cis. E and G. Hmm? Hmm? E or G. It's a G. When we define those E or G, we need to give the priority, right? What is the criteria for the, pri the priority? Atomic weight. Right? So that's why if you look at uh, the between these two, carbon versus hydrogen. So this is higher. Here. Bromine versus the carbon, this is the higher. Right? So this is the opposite one, anti ligand means across. That's E conformation. Now if you change one of those stereo chemistry here, then similar way the chemistry will, uh, they will happen through anti anti of the structure. So product is different here. Penny and penny is the opposite side, right? Cis or trans? Trans, E or G. Now in this case, that's G. Okay? So those are two are the different <coughs> relations. So depending on those original, the structure of the stereochemistry, product is also formed the different product, stereochemical. Okay? So this is essential reactions we have seen inversion define the chemistry, and E2 reactions is anti periclana and it's a defined one product is a form. Okay. 
Now, if that structure is in the ring, then that is a little bit better defined. Again, we have seen six membered ring, they can form chair conformation. Then this is axial and this is equatorial. So two different kinds of uh, uh, the orientation is possible. If it's axial, axial, then it's easy to see anti-parallel, anti-peripheral. Right? So if it's this configuration, trans and also this is the opposite direction, okay, base can come here, attack, push it down, and then there's this one. If that is cis, the, this equatorial configuration, now this is a living group, right? There is no anti the anti periplana conformation. Everything is the bush positions. Nothing is here. Right? So then, in principle, this reaction should not happen. But if you look at this one and this one, those are just a different conformer. They can go back and forth. Right? Even though, which one is the most stable? A and B, which one is the most stable? B is a little more stable, but still, there is a, some percentage is uh, constantly back and forth. When they go to the, this configuration, conformation, then it generates this product. But this, in this conformation, you can assume reaction may not happen. So this is E2 reactions. Now, if this is a fully open, then this uh, the conversion may be very faster. But if this is a partially anchored, if you want to make it fully anchored, usually you need to add here, especially the tip, right? Keep the tip. But if you look at carefully, one is not here, so this is isopropyl. But still, it's kind of an anchoring effect it has. So this one is more preferred of this configuration. Then chloride is axial, so it's through this, it can form the attack here and then push up, push up and they can generate this product, E2 product. If this one, serochemistry is changing, chloride is coming into the equatorial, okay? So this one and this one is a different compound, diastereomer. And in this case, there is no anti-planar, anti, -planar, anti -planar position, so this reaction cannot happen. Looks very similar, but this one has diaxial positions. It can, so it can go to the E2, but this one cannot. But still we can observe, even though this one is maybe a million times faster, still we see small amount of this product to perform. How? Through this ring flip. If this is T but kill, it may be almost impossible, but isopropyl, still there's a very small populations it can go to the this conformation. Once it is formed this way, then partially, temp, the temporarily, this kind of anti position is formed, and then this product is made. And then if you come, and then this is go back to this structure. Now if you compare those two product, position of double bond is a different, right? So in this case, if it's converted this way, there is no proton here. That's why the double bond does not form here. Proton is only available this position, that's why double bond is formed here. So the position of the double bond is different, you can see. So original, the, the starting material was chloro position with the same position, two positions. But because of this reason, this generates the, here, this position double bond, and this one generates the, the double bond. Again, very well defined the product, E2 product. What do you need? Strong base. Okay, then comparing to this, let's think about the E1. E1, as we said, it's a similar to SN1 reaction. The first step should be carboperiodical. And it has uh, two options. Once carboperiodical is formed, previously we have seen, we have thought only SN1 reaction. So now it's possible it can go SN1 or E1. So if this mix, this carbocation, if the carbocation meets with any kind of nucleophile, weak nucleophile is also okay, like water. 
then it can generate the alcohol. But if there's no alcohol and just uh, stabilized this carbonyl intermediate, then there's one option is by removing this proton and then generate the product. So if you have this, and then by adding this reagent, so adding water and ethanol, now end result is like this. By looking at the other uh, substrate, tertiary halide, SN2, impossible. Now we are, our option A is either E1, E2, or SN1. Now if you look at all the products, at least the product was this the S product. Oh, SN1 is involved here. What percent? 54 percent. Oh, majority of them is generating carboxylate intermediate means the tertiary butyl carboxylate is formed and then reacted with the water it generated SN1 product. Now the other one here, then you may think whether this is E2 product or E1 product, what do you think? Is there a strong base? There is no strong base, right? So this one is polar conditions, protic solvent, polar condition. So if you wanted to push the reaction into one direction, E2 reaction, what is the keyword? Strong base. Hard nucleophile or strong base. If you want to push the reaction into E1 direction, key point is the stabilizing intermediate, carboxylate. What is the best? Water. If it is not developed in water, it is mixed together with alcohol. It, that's E1 reaction you can push. But there is always there's a possibility of competing between E1 and SN1. As we see here, now we have S product and B product here. So to push those reactions into one reaction, so here this is a one, other reaction we have seen. In this case, if you want to push this reaction into E2 reaction, key point is you need to add a strong base. And that strong base, you generate this one, single one. There is a no anti this reaction, so only this one, it generates double bond here. Now, if it goes through E1 reaction, and stability wise, this two, this is more stable. Equatorial, equatorial, axial, axial. This is very enforced in equilibrium. Now, if it goes into E1 direction, in this case, polar condition, strength of the basicity is lower. So in this case, there is strong, high concentration of the base has been used. In this case, it's not. There is a small amount of a base and polar, 80% aqueous, the condition. Now, if it forms intermediate carbocation here, secondary carbocation, now, if carbocation is formed here, it has two options. Elimination can happen through this or through this. Right. And it forms, if you look at all the structure, this one is the most substitute position. Then this one is majority and this one. I sent two reactions. If the reaction happens, 100% inversion. Very well defined reaction. E2 reaction, if it forms a product, only one product. SN1 reaction, plena carboxylate intermediate, nucleophile can attack here or here, racemization happens. E1 reactions, once it forms the carboxylate intermediate in the middle, it can go to this way or this way, two ways. So always SN1, E1, a little more messier. SN2, E2 is more defined. Okay, E1, C, V. Basically, mainly we see E2 or E1, but if this position, this position is alpha position of a carbonyl, we have seen before a little. If base attack this position, we need to generate an ion here. Now, double bond and then next to the position, an ion then it's a possible to form resonance. We have seen this case before. Cation here, the resonance happens or not? 
double bound, and then next position, third position, terrier, happens or not? Redness happens. NIM also happens. Radical was super happy. So that means double bound, that was the case we have seen before. Double bound, and then next position here. Either one electron, or no electron, or two electron. All the cases, through this three bound, either two electrons are shared, three electrons are shared, or four electrons are shared, all of the cases is a stabilizing effect. That's an allele prediction effect. And we have seen some reactions before. Radical case was most stable through this allele prediction. In a sense, in the case, it's single electron for each position. Three bound, three electron, that's radical. That's why we have seen allele chromination was most, was the most stable. Carbocation case, allele carbocation was similar to the secondary. But anyway, this is also partially stabilized. So at the position of the carbonyl, this position can be affected by base effect, and then sometimes it can generate this kind of a partially stabilized anion. Then it goes to elimination. This is exceptional case of a e, uh, E1 CD mechanism. <coughs> now let's look at the, the, the specific examples. Look at this. What do you expect? Secondary position and strong base. <coughs> Maybe it's N2 or E2. How about this? No base, formic acid, and water, and no strong nucleophile. And maybe this may go to the E1 or SM1 reactor. So this case, secondary positions, it seems like SM2 product is not observed. And you can assume <coughs> that this metal has a pad where here, this proton, or this proton. Either one can generate, push it down and push it up, and then generate this eliminator product. Maybe E2 because they use the strong base. In this case, polar solvent, and then this one is weak nucleophile. Still, if it forms carbocation as an intermediate, maybe this can be attacked to the couple together with this positive charge position, carbocation. Then this can be E1 product, <coughs> SN1 product, and this one can be E1 product. Maybe as a mixture. At least we can rule out no SN2 and no E2 because there is no strong base. Okay, let's try to summarize what we have learned today. And last week. Now we are learning about alkyl halide. Maybe half of those organic chemistry mechanisms you hear is either SN1. SN2, E1, or E2. Okay. If the alkyl halide is a primary, primary alkyl halide, maybe the first choice is the SN2 reactor. Open structure, if you have a good nucleophile, nucleophile attack that position and remove that halide, SN2 is the first choice you can do. If it's a tertiary, forget about the SN2, it doesn't happen. Then, Still two options. If you have a very polar solvent and two stabilized carbocation, then you can generate carbocation intermediate. Then either SN1 or E1. If you use strong base intentionally, then you drive the reaction into E2 reaction. Tertiary position, that carbon center is too crowded. The nucleophile cannot approach, but next carbon position is less crowded. If you use strong base, nucleophile but with a strong base, they have a chance to attack proton. Then you can generate the product. 
So this one and this one is a relatively easy. Now problem is the secondary. Secondary, it may compete always. So depending on the cases, if you have a good nuclear file, soft malam malam nuclear file, maybe you can push that reaction into SN3 reaction. If you use very polar protic solvent, you know you are pushing that into carboparent reaction. It may go to the SN1 or E1 reaction. If you use a strong base, less polar solvent, you may drive that into E2 reaction. So that's always a competing into each other. So it's not very clear all the, all the, all, all the time. So by looking at all the situations, you need to choose. Or by looking at the product, you explain, oh, this one goes to more E2. For example, tertiary halide and nucleophile. What is the mechanism of this reaction? This is the acid reaction, first of all, right? Not elimination process, right? Substitution reaction, acid reaction. SN2, SN1. SN1, SN2 is impossible. This should be SN1. If you want this reaction, what can you do? Add water to the reaction. To the Grignard reagent, if you add water, then bond would be. But in this case, you add water to stabilize the carboparent. Okay? So this is SN1 reaction. How about this? This reaction? Do you know this reaction? What is the mechanism of this reaction? Why? There is an inversion happens there, right? It doesn't say anything else but attack directly here and then at least the S reaction and then this one is inverted into the product SN2 reaction. Right? If it's SN1 reaction, it should have a mixture of this and the other of this formation together. So most likely this happens in primary position. How about this? Yeah. This is it SN1 or SN2? Is it E1 or E2? Hmm? This is E1? Why? Product is the E product. It's not S product, right? And it form, it put this E parenthesis outside. This means it's the intermediate. Carbocation intermediate is involved. Then it doesn't say anything by letter, but that implies that this is the E1 mechanism. Suppose if you have carbon anion intermediate here, then that is E1CD. This is the E1 mechanism. There was a chance that this one could go to SN1. If you have a lot of the water around, then water can be coupled to this. You can damage the alcohol. How can I always, if you are competing, go to the elimination or SN1 reaction? Okay. How about this? How many years ago? You don't know that? Just that. Yes, sir. Say again. Oh, this is E2. Okay, any other opinion? 
basically you want to see these. I just said that intermediate lies, intermediate is a couple cation E1. If it's a couple anion, then the E1 is E2. E2, there is no intermediate, it's only transition state. E2 attacks coming in and then leaving out. How about this? You know what? I'm going to put it in my face because I'm going to put it in my face. Coming in and then leaving out is happening together consecutively. Okay, so this is the, the summary of those reaction mechanisms again. This is SN1, SN2, E1, E1CB, and E2. And very beginning, I showed you this in historical. The experiment and starting from alcohol now we learned the logo chemistry and then first step is the PCL5 similar to PCL3 okay changing that into Cl and then uh, E base uh, silver hydroxide kind of a base and then make it opposite way now first step minus becomes the plus Inversion happen. This is, can you say inversion happen by this notation? Starting with was minus, and the product is a plus. Then can you say inversion happen? You cannot, because this plus minus is an optical activity, experimentally measured, right? Even though S becomes R, experimentally sometimes they have opposite the, the location, it's also possible. So this experimentally measured minus into plus, if it's the same product, this is alcohol, alcohol, this is enantiomer, right? If it's enantiomer, then minus the plus, you can say this is an opposite configuration can help. But if this is a X and this is a Y, different product, Using this experimentally measured optical activity, you cannot tell this is the same orientation or the opposite configuration. You cannot, in principle. Maybe 90% may be same, but 10% there is an exception, then you cannot rely on with this. Okay? But now we learned the chemistry. So through this chemistry, PCL5, inversion happens or not? PBR3, PCL3, inversion happens or not? I don't know if you have a question, but I don't know if you have a question. Hongju, mask is a Inversion happens or not? Inversion happens. This attacks first, and then chloride is released. Chloride comes back and attacks behind. And that's how we generate our chloride. Same thing for the SOCl2 reaction. So that's why the, for the first reaction, inversion happens. Then, in the second reaction, from here to here, if this is inverted, then second reaction, inversion should not happen, correct? 
right? If inversion happens one time, if it happens again, then it should have the same product, right? But it's the opposite. How can you explain? At least by the, by the, the chemistry we have learned so far, TCL3, TCL5, PBR3, SOCL2, inversion happens, right? Attack and then coming back and attack behind, the inversion happens. So first step, inversion happens, we know. Second step, we didn't learn the silver oxide, the reagent, but we can assume that's kind of a silver hydroxide type of reagent, or it's minus. Then why this second step, inversion did not happen? If OH minus attack, inversion should happen if it's SN2 reaction. If it's SN1, you may get the last maybe here, so no need to explain anything, it's screwed up. But it seems like it's almost perfectly changing. Means, define as SN2 happen. This is the explanation. So first step, when we started with this, and then where do we start? So let's just start here. In this step, first step is OH into chloride. This one is stereochemistry is a changing. Now, this chloride has options to go to go back to hydroxide. If OH directly attacks this position, then inversion should happen again. That's a sense of reaction. But in this case, there are internal nucleophiles around. One of, one of those internal nucleophiles, carboxylate, it attacks here and forms this intermediate. So this is a one SN2 reaction, and that makes inversion. And then hydroxide attacks from outside the brain open again. So inversion and inversion, two inversions happen. That's why at the end of the result of chloride going to this hydroxide to the other reactions, there is no inversion. It goes to the inversion and inversion, and then you just ended up as same situation. So what's in our now I see that you are talking about so just one time and also. Okay, so let's summarize again here. So historically this interesting observation was found. And this reaction we have learned. Okay? Inversion happened, that's not two reactions. And inversion happened what happened here, and this should be inversion and inversion. That's why it is retention of the overall that is the explosion shape. Okay. So, 지난 시간이랑 지난 2주간 배웠던 게 여러분들은 organic chemistry 한 절반 정도로 배웠죠. SN2, SN1, E1, E2, and stereochemistry relationship. 조금 더 디테일로 가면 이 반응들을 어떻게 컨트롤할 수 있는지 어떻게 대처할 수 있는지 이 정도 배웠으면 여러분은 이 정도가 잘 정리가 되어 있어야 이 학기에 가서 조금 더 다양한 케미스트리를 배울 때 이게 기본이 되는 거예요. 이 정도 배웠으면 어디 나가서 어떤 케미스트리 하는 척할 수 있어요. 근데 이게 머릿속에 헷갈리면 이래서 말이 안 나오겠지. 자, 다음 주에는 어, 이 대부분을 여러분들이 혼자 공부를 했기 때문에 다음 주 발효되는 저 테크닉들을 모두 모아서 그 테크닉들을 왜 배웠을까? 유지분자의 구조를 파악하는 데 써먹으려고 배웠어요. 그래서 그게 대한 연습을 하겠죠. 이번 주까지는 연습 문제 언어 올려줄 테니까 여기까지 열심히 복습해. 알키 하이라이드하고 알키 하이라이드 리액션 이거는 여러분들이 평생 가지고 왔으면 대단히 좋겠어요. 그래서 피자 삶의 가치가 대단히 높아. 가성비 대단히 높은 부분을 잘 열심히 공부해서 잘 파악하고 다음 주 발휘하자 같이 이 부분을 차차는 총정리하고 어떻게 적용하는지 기술적인 예로 가지고 같이 공부하시니까 발휘하자 같이 공부하고 다음 주 목요일날은 먼저 이 체험한 요 6분만 하게 가고 있으니까 저희 6분 위주로 제가 체험을 정말 정리할 테니까 여러분들이 제대로 정리가 되어 있어야 정리가 정리되지 아니면 그냥 또 아무것도 앞에 안 들어올 테야 시간 스케줄 잘 봐서 다음 주 목요일까지는 다 정리해가지고 정리할 준비를 해가지고 네. 네.
시험한 마지막 교육이 되도록 하여가지고 목요일 날 시험 스타일은 지난번에 선거와 마찬가지로 뭐 이렇게 아주 대단한 것들만 해서 여러분들의 응용력을 보는 거 기대도 안 해. 여러분 이걸 좀 한번 대답할 수 있는 분은 정리한 지식을 헷갈리지 않는 만큼 여러분들이 소집을 해서 써먹을 수 있을 경제까지 가는 거만 해도 아마 더 복잡한 거 해봐야 머릿속에 남지 않을 거예요. 그래서 잘 정리해서 클래스별로 딱 눈으로 들여다보면 무슨 얘기를 하려고 하는지 뭐 알아야 이걸 할수 있겠지 그 정도의 논리를 스스로 갖출 수 있을 만큼 준비하겠습니다. 오케이? 자, 오늘 우리 수업에 질문 있을까? 자, 공식적으로 반응 수업은 끝났다. 다음 주에는 스태프 스타트 모아가지고 분석 반응도 안 하고 그 다음에 준비하겠습니다. 오케이?